Hello everyone, thanks for joining today. The time is now 12 noon. We're gonna go ahead and get started with today's webinar. Today's webinar is part of our ongoing Cognos webinar series. Uh, if it's the first time you're attending, uh, go to lpa.com forward slash events and you can check out some of our other Cognos related enablement webinars that are largely training oriented to help your team uh, become enabled to be more successful with IBM Business Analytics tools. So again, if this is your first webinar, thanks so much for joining today. Go to lpa.com forward slash events to check out our upcoming webinars as well. Today we're going to be talking about uh, migrating from IBM Cognos Data Manager to IBM Data Stage. Um, so for the folks on the call today, I expect that many of you are existing Cognos Data Manager customers. Uh, my name is Jesse McNulty. I'm an account manager here at LPA. With me, I have Steve Leed, who is our information management practice lead, who will give the demos and talk through uh, the conversion utility and uh, different options for helping you get migrated. I'm gonna start with a brief introduction in, into LPA software solutions. LPA was founded in 2001. We're actually headquartered in Rochester, New York, but we have consultants peppered throughout the United States, likely one uh, somewhere near you. We're exclusively focused on business analytics, including business intelligence, advanced analytics, SPSS, um, and data warehousing, which would include information management products from IBM that we're gonna talk about today, as well as things like Natiza and some of the other uh, IM products. We have over 150 clients, and this span from Fortune 10 size organizations all the way down to companies with uh, 10 employees. So we really work with a wide variety of uh, customer sizes. We also bring some industry uh, knowledge to the table. About half of our business is in the healthcare arena, so we really have some folks on staff that understand uh, the nuances of healthcare analytics. Additionally, we do a lot of work in the hospitality industry, higher education, energy distribution, retail, manufacturing, uh, finance. So we, we really have a wide variety of industry knowledge that we bring to the table. We're an IBM Premier Business Partner, uh, which includes reselling status. And so anything Cognos, SPSS, Watson, any of the analytic products or information management products are ones that LPA specialize in and we're licensed experts in. So if you have any questions on you know, what you're entitled uh, to leverage, for example, we can help you with those types of questions. Our services team has extensive business analytics and data warehouse experience. They're 100% certified. We hold over 85 technical certifications. Our consultants have been doing this for a long time. On average, we have 10 plus years experience. In addition to that, 50% of our consultants have eight plus years of tenure at LPA. And this is really important, you know, because when you have someone come in and learn your environment, potentially help you with a project or services, and that project is done, that knowledge leaves your organization, right? There's some knowledge transfer to make sure it stays, but here at LPA, you know, we're going to enable you. But at the same time, the consultant that initially delivered that work, more often than not, three years after that project, is still going to be at LPA. So when you want to ask those follow-up questions, the people who did the work are more than likely still going to be here. So very high retention rate for a consulting firm. In 2013, we were an IBM Beacon Award finalist for one of our healthcare analytic solutions. And we're very proud of that fact. Okay, from a business analytics offerings perspective, uh, we offer services to companies that are just getting started with their analytic journey. So if we start in the bottom left, you're just really getting started. You might be looking at things like a data governance assessment or a BI readiness assessment or strategy and roadmap, maybe some help with some business case development. So we offer strategy services to come in and help you with some of that decision making. The next step up on your journey gets into data warehousing or in the big data space. And that's really what we're here to talk about today. 
So we offer a wide variety of services to assist with data warehousing, architecture, design, full-blown implementation, conversion services, um, data warehouse modernization, um, and then training services for the IBM tools. On the Cognos front, next step up in the journey, business intelligence, your, your reporting layer, your reporting analytics layer. We offer health check services for current Cognos environments, migrations, upgrades. We do dozens of upgrades a year in this space. We have SDK experts on staff and and we are often hired to come in and actually integrate Cognos into people's products. So, so, so end users don't even know Cognos is part of it. So we have deep Cognos implementation knowledge. We also offer customized training services in the Cognos space. The next step up in the journey touches on performance management. And to us, this is really where IBM Cognos TM1 fits in. So similar to our BI service capabilities, we offer very similar services in the TM1 space, planning and budgeting. And then finally, advanced analytics, which is you know, the hot topic uh, in today's analytics environment. Um, we offer consulting services around predictive analytics, leveraging IBM technologies, which includes SPSS. We also offer location analytics services. So if you have any map-based or geospatial uh, reporting requirements, we partner with Esri uh, to offer those services. And Watson Analytics for, for the existing Cognos customers currently on this call. Everyone should have recently received a mailer from IBM uh, about a Watson free offer. So we are also a specialist in Watson. LPA's offerings that directly apply to the, today's webinar uh, include first in, InfoSphere Information Server training. So this is largely data stage training uh, to help get your team converted from data manager way of thinking to how you implement data stage. We also offer full data stage implementation services. Uh, license assessments, if you have questions on what you're currently licensed to actually leverage, we can assist with that. Data warehouse modernization, uh, we offer a free assessment. If you're thinking about getting into things like Big Insights or Hadoop or considering migrating uh, database platforms, which doing it at a time when you're converting your ETL technology makes sense. So if you're currently on a, a SQL Server or an Oracle or a traditional database, you know, we strongly uh, encourage you to consider leveraging a data warehouse appliance uh, like Natiza moving forward. And we'll, we'll have a future webinar on some of the benefits of Natiza, but, but we strongly encourage folks to consider modernizing their data warehouse as part of any conversion that they do. We also offer a data manager to data stage conversion service um, that would include leveraging the, the IBM conversion utility. Um, so currently, to anyone on this webinar, we're offering a free assessment for this service offering. So if you'd like to have a conversation about what it might take to convert your environment, uh, shoot us an email after this webinar and we'll reach out and uh, begin the process uh, to give you that assessment. Okay, today's agenda. We're gonna start with the license migration from data manager to InfoSphere Data Stage Workgroup Edition. So this is gonna give you all the details you need to know about how your licenses have been converted. Then I gotta turn it over to Steve, who's actually gonna walk us through the information, InfoSphere Information Server product and actually show you data stage and some of the, some of the capabilities. We'll also talk through approaches for migrations, um, show you some demos, and then we'll get into Q&A. Okay, so all current data manager entitlements as of last June have already been migrated to information server. So if you've noticed the different title of your licenses on your renewal, this is why. As part of this, Cognos Data Manager customers, you still have full functionality that you had before. Data Manager is now licensed under info, under uh, data stage. So it's simply a name change on your renewal. You can still leverage the Data Manager. The conversion brings two information server capabilities to the table for you. That includes data stage workgroup edition, which is the data integration tool, 
and then the information governance catalog which includes a business glossary for helping govern your data and steve is actually going to show some examples of leveraging that that's great news it's a it's a great capability that ties right all the way back into your Cognos tools to better govern your data end to end through the cycle. So that's really a great new capability that was given to customers at no additional cost. I strongly encourage everyone to look at the governance catalog and figure out how to work that into your current uh, data governance processes. As part of the migration, as you migrate, what IBM has done is they've given everyone the ability to leverage your current data manager entitlements for both a data manager instance as well as data stage. So if you've got a prod server and dev, dev server today for data manager, and you want to go stand up a new data stage prod and a new data stage dev and have the data manager environments coexist, until you can fully migrate, you are entitled to do that as part of this migration. So it's very good news for customers because it means you can start, you can get started with data stage right now. If you need to extend your data manager licensing in any way, you can purchase InfoSphere data stage workgroup edition licenses. So if you need some additional PBUs, you can just, you could buy the InfoSphere data stage workgroup edition and they'll give you that data manager entitlements. The following table sum, summarizes the entitlement migration. First and foremost, again, this was automatic, already occurred. Data manager engine. So this would include your production or, or non-production data manager li engine licenses. Those have been transferred to data stage workgroup work edition at a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you had 280 PVUs of prod and 280 previews of non-prod non of data manager before, you now have 280 PVUs of data stage workgroup edition production and 280 PVUs of data stage workgroup edition non-production. Your data manager developer user licenses have been converted to two licenses, a data stage designer workgroup edition and an information governance catalog user. And those are in the one-to-one -one ratio. And finally, for customers that were leveraging the data manager connector for SAP, that's been replaced by information server pack for SAP applications. And based on the number of PVUs that you had, that's what determines how many installs you get of information server pack for SAP applications. The expected data manager uh, end of life date is going to be in 2018. So we basically have about three years uh, to get the migration over. So until then, um, when the formal end of service is announced, which that date has not yet been specified, um, you know, you can continue to leverage data manager in a supported fashion, but sometime in 2018, that support will go away. So it's critical you start thinking about how you begin your migrations now. For those of you that are still leveraging data manager that run into an issue and you need to open a PMR, just be advised that when you open it, you need to start with data manager now falls under information server workgroup edition. So, so specify information server work edition as the product, and then you'll see on the next screen data manager as a component you could select. Okay, now before I turn it over to Steve, I just want to summarize why it's so important to migrate right now. You know, so first and foremost, you know, three years is not a lot of time to to get new software installed in your environment get your team up, up to date on actually leveraging that software and maintaining that software. So the sooner you get it in, the sooner you're gonna start building those capabilities. Okay. Information Server brings new capabilities that Data Manager did not, okay? IBM has been investing in Information Server as their strategic data integration platform for years, right? 
it's an it's upper right on the Gartner Ma Magic Quadrants uh, for data integration tools. So it's an industry leading data integration tool. That's where IBM has been investing in these tools. Data Manager hasn't had a lot of enhancements since the Cognos days. So, you know, if you haven't seen those enhancements, that's why. So, so, so moving to Information Server is going to bring new cutting edge capabilities that you can leverage versus being on Data Manager where you're just going to be held where you're at for the next three years and that'll be the end of life. So if you want to be cutting edge, you want to have the new capabilities, you got to move to data stage. Um, the next consideration is a fairly obvious one. If you give yourself the time to do this, to do this migration, and you can plan it in iterative steps, it's going to reduce your risk greatly. It's going to reduce your overall operational costs and increase your efficiency. So just like any other project, I always recommend to my customers, try to break it down into as iterative steps as possible so that you can learn from each as you go. Any new development you're doing, you know, if, you, if, you, if you've got a new data mart that you have to go create and data manager is currently your ETL platform, we strongly suggest get data stage installed and build that new capability with the data stage platform you know, and let take data manager coexist until you can get that other content migrated, right? That way you're leveraging data stage. It's going to be faster to build, to build your data warehouse on that data stage platform. And you can begin to get, to get your team uh, up to date on, on the new tool set. Okay. Well, thank you for the time. I'm now going to turn it over to Steve Lade, who's going to dive into the information server product, show you data stage as well as information governance catalog. Thanks for your time and, and Steve, take it away. Thanks, Jesse. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Steve Lead, and I'd like to say thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, hopefully you'll find this presentation informative. Uh, for the next 40 minutes or so, I would like to really just scratch the surface on some of the capabilities that IBM Information Server has to offer, uh, data stage being one of them do a quick demo of the conversion utility and show you some of the governance catalog and data stage and uh, finally wrap up with how we at LPA uh, would love to be able to help you through the process of migrating when you decide it's time to start that journey. If at any time during this presentation you'd like some additional information please feel free to ask uh, your questions in the chat window and we will attempt to answer as many questions as possible within the allotted time. Where Data Manager was a single purpose tool designed for moving data, Infosphere is a really an enterprise solution that has many integrated capabilities that you can grow into over time. And the great thing about it is you don't have to start with data stage. You could start with governance, data governance and then move into data stage or really pick and choose where you want to go. Since this webinar is about converting data manager to data stage, I'm going to be spending most of my time here and focusing in on those capabilities. Before we start, I thought it would be, uh, make some sense to take a look at the overall architecture of Information Server. Starting at the bottom left, the engine tier is really where it all starts. It's here where you connect to all your various data sources, whether they are structured or unstructured, uh, the data could be at rest or in motion, and using tools such as data stage and quality stage, the data is loaded, cleansed, and transformed from its raw native state into the high quality assets of business data or business information. The metadata repository, if we take a look on the right, is a, is a single repository that stores not only the metadata for your data stage and quality stage jobs, but all of the metadata for your entire business analytics environment. This is the tier where you'll find more than just the information about the jobs that have run. It is here where you define data definitions for business rules, you assign data stewards to subject areas, Data models are described, and you can find your lineage diagrams, and so much more. In the middle, the services tier <clears throat> is consists of the application server, common services, and then product-specific services for the suite as a whole. The services tier also hosts the information server applications that are web-based. 
And finally, if we take a look at the client tier up at the top here, this consists of all of the client programs and consoles that are used in the development, administration, and other tasks, and the computers where they are installed. The client, client tier consists of a combination of both web-based consoles and client applications. So now what I'd like to do is take a little bit more of a deep dive into how Information Server compares to uh, Data Manager. And the one thing I want to point out here is that we're not comparing Data Stage to Data Manager, but we're actually comparing Data Information Server as a whole, because as part of the migration process, you get all of these additional features and functionality that you typically don't get with Data Manager. So if we start off with Data Volumes, Data Manager gives you the ability to collect, integrate, and transform large volumes of data with data structures ranging from the simple to highly complex. As a platform, it is both scalable and highly tunable and solves multiple large-scale business problems through high-performance processing of massive volumes of data. Real-time integration, including the ability to capture messages from the message queue and the ability to publish data integration logic as a shared service, provides for a better utility and reuse of existing integration logic. Furthermore, it provides a broader ap applicability of trusted business information across the enterprise. Information Server provides complete connectivity between any data source and any application. Full data lineage through a unified metadata repository that spans the entire integration lifecycle. So taking a look at, from a report all the way back to the individual sources. Finally, by using the same user interface, tools such as Quality Stage and Data Stage allow you to ensure that there is a single version of truth within your enterprise data. For those of you that have, a Cognos, that have Cognos in your environment, IBM Information Server integrates and enhances your Cognos environment investment. Not only can you import your existing Cognos models into the governance catalog, but you can also use Cognos as the reporting environment for the metadata repository. This new visibility will increase your use, the user's trust in the system since the terms and policies that are defined are centrally managed and published. Being able to see data lineage, lineage from the report all the way back to the source tables helps users understand what they are seeing and reduces the number of calls that you get either to the help desk or the IT department. Overall, your users become more self-sufficient. Let's take a couple of minutes now to dive into some of the features and functionality that will be available when you migrate from Data Manager to Data Stage. Data Stage provides you with a multi-user environment that allows you to visually design your ETL processes without having to write any code. So now you can have large development teams working together collaboratively in a single environment without fear of corrupting your repository. It provides a secure team-based development environment that allows you to easily migrate, create and migrate your code through the different environments. Data Stage allows you to build once and then scale vertically or horizontally without the need for any design or code changes. Increasing your degree of parallelism is a simple task of adding additional nodes. All of the content for each data stage job is managed in the metadata repository and as such is available for reporting by others through the use of things such as lineage diagrams and impact diagrams. What we're looking at here is the data stage canvas where you implement your business rules during the ETL process. As you can see it is a drag and drop environment that greatly reduces the amount of manual coding that you need to do and it replaces it with basically setting properties of each of the different stages. Data Stage allows you to define your project structure in such a way that it makes sense to you and your development team. You can create folders to logically create, uh, group your jobs together. You can create things such as parameter sets that allow you to dynamically control various components of, the, of your uh, data flows. Like things such as connection strings, target, source, target uh, tables or um, source tables. As you can see, Data Stage and Quality Stage um, has an extensive library of different constructs and stages that are available to your developer. 
from a simple source file to load data in to complex name and address matching stages that have a lot of um, the logic built in for you. And we're not really going to have enough time to go through all of these different stages today. So I'm really going to um, just pick one or two for us to focus in on. Uh, hopefully they are um, some of the more complex uh, and useful tasks. Uh, data rules uh, are a great stage. And what this allows you to do is have your business developer, your business users, define rules in, um, in the glossary and have those rules implemented in the ETL by your, by your developers. So you can really get a great degree of collaboration between the business and the developers to make sure that what is being built is correct. These rules uh, ensure that when the ETL process runs, the data is cleansed and validated before it gets published into the warehouse. By virtue of the fact that your business users are defining the, the rules, they have a much more vested interest in the success of the project as they have a lot more ownership uh, in it. The match designer is uh, another great stage and really matching data is probably one of the hardest things uh, to get right when it comes to uh, ETL development. And I'm sure everyone on the call today has at one point in time uh, tried to join two separate sets of data, whether it was in um, uh, Excel or SQL or something else and invariably you come and build up with some set of fuzzy logic rules uh, and it ne you never quite get it right. Um, it's uh, error prone, it's difficult and more importantly you come back two weeks later and you go what was I trying to do? So managing it becomes very very complicated and time consuming in the future. What the match designer stage allows you to do is to graphically design all of the matching criteria and then to view the effectiveness of that rule uh, before you apply it into the main job sequence. So doing, defining what the decision rules are, applying the cutoff range, um, and viewing the data for immediate feedback so that you know when this runs, you're going to get, you will have a high degree of confidence. Like Data Manager, Data Stage provides you with the ability to create process flows to control your ETL. Um, Data stage <clears throat> really allows you to create a simple uh, sequential flow, uh, source to target and be done with it, or complex flows that include things such as loops and weights um, and calls to external processes. And uh, data stage and quality stage also allows you to integrate with third-party schedulers. So if you have your own scheduling tools such as Autosys or any of the others that are out there, you can easily incorporate the jobs that you've defined uh, into it and use that scheduler instead. So I could spend all day going through each of the different stages, but unfortunately we don't have time. I'm going to move across now and take a look at some of the um, some of the functions of of the business glossary and how you can use it for information governance. One of the biggest things that we run into in any form of data warehousing environment is what happens if I change a column? Who gets impacted? And the business glossary really gives you these impact diagrams in an easy to use way that you can navigate. And it's not just limited to the ETL tool itself, right? Um, many tools will give you an impact diagram of just their slice. This goes across your entire IM stack. So it, if you change a column in the database, it'll tell you all of the data, all of the state jobs that are affected all the way across into the individual reports that may, uh, that will be impacted too. And it allows you to do the impact analysis on any object type. So like I said, you can change a column in a table, change a uh, data stage job, change a report, etc. And this tool will allow you to view across your enterprise, across your IM uh, solution where, you, uh, where there could be potential impacts. The business glossary um, lineage component shows the relationships between business terms, data model entities, and the technical and report fields. It provides cross-tool mapping of the business terms which ultimately allows the relationships to be understood. Right? A great graphical tool showing you where um, data comes from and how it got there. 
So what I've really shown you from Business Glossary are two very small components of it, but you've noticed that it, it's one tool where you can start managing your uh, impact and view your lineage. But it's also the tool that you're gonna use for all of your data governance activities. So if you have a data governance group, uh, or if you're thinking about do, setting it up, this is the tool that, you, that will enable you to define your business rules, assign your, um, <clears throat> your data stewards, and get notified, and make sure that your data stewards are notified when there's an anomaly in the data, right? And the great thing about it is you can define your data steward either as a single person or as a group of people. Uh, it's a really, really powerful tool when it comes to setting up your data governance uh, environment. So as with any tool, there's always some form of administration um, that's required. And within the governance catalog, you have your administration page. And this is where you can set up um, your and manage your, your, your metadata. It's where you can define who your data stewards are. You can set up approval workflows. Uh, so when you're creating labels and you want to make sure that they are being defined correctly or rules, you before they get published, you want to make sure that it goes through the necessary approval process, you can define those workflows in this um, portion of, uh, of the governance catalog. Right? It's also here where you will uh, assign user privileges, so defining who's allowed access um, and what they can do. So we've seen some of the functionality. We've seen how you can manage and maintain your, uh, the, the metadata. But the next question is, how do I navigate it? How do I find what I'm looking for? So I've got all of this great information stored inside of this repository. How do I get it out? And um, the Business Glossary really gives you uh, a couple of different ways to do it. Firstly, you can go and define uh, <clears throat> business terms and rules uh, within the system. So here is where you can create your terms and your rules and your policies. And then you can also go and navigate and find the different applications, the different components um, or the different assets that are you that have these terms or rules applied to them. You can also navigate through the different uh, information assets. So you can browse through physical or logical models. If you have tools such as Erwin or Architect, um, you can import your models into um, into the uh, business glossary and have them available here for uh, to to be reviewed and to be managed. You can also import some uh, physical tables. So you can connect into a, a table, a, a database, reverse engineer all of the contents and have it available in here and um, enhance the information about those tables. So you can actually go put in your labels and your descriptions, etc. And finally, you can just do a straight search. So if you're looking for items that have been tagged or if you're looking for a specific column or a table or a rule or whatever it is, you can um, search for it directly. So really, what are we, what are we saying? What are, what are the key messages? First and foremost, IBM's got you covered, right? It's moving down this path can be daunting and we wanna make sure that you have everything that you need, right? The upgrade path that IBM is offering has minimal impact to you and your organization and it provides a vast amount of additional functionality that you, do, that you don't have today. And as Jesse mentioned earlier on in, in, in his presentation, you have the time to do it and to do it right. Um, you don't want to get stuck with the three months to go before the product is end of life. You want to be able to take your time, define your strategy, and start moving to and towards um, the migration in a, uh, in a in a formal manner and make sure that you're doing it the, in, in, with all of your I's dotted and your T's crossed. IBM Inf Information Server has a much richer feature set to satisfy your data integration requirements. As you've heard, information da uh, Infosphere Data Stage is the leading is a leading ETL tool in the market with thousands of customers, and um, has a unique integration capabilities with Cognos. So your current investments really are are going to be maximized. You can easily extend, so you don't have to go big bang. You can start off with just the portions that make sense today, slowly grow up your internal skills and understand what the capabilities are um, without having code sitting on the shelf doing nothing for 
for a couple of years while you're waiting to get there, right? You can move one, as you gain confidence in your abilities and the tool and you understand what it's, its full set of features and functionalities, you can start moving into data quality and data governance programs. Unlike Data Manager, Infosphere Information Server offers massive scalability, data quality, met metadata management, and integration into other key capabilities such as master data management, security, and so much more. And with the latest fix pack of IBM, there's now an export import utility to help you through the migration process. Uh, and I'm going to show you that in just a second. So with that, I'm actually going to move across and jump into a demo. Okay, so let's come across into my demo environment. Okay, so basically what we have here, let me open up my data manager catalog. This, hopefully this is all very familiar to you guys. We have a list of dimension builds and fact builds. And the first step is to create a package. Now you can connect directly to the catalog, um, but I find it's easier to use um, to use uh, packages. So let's go here. Oh, we are going to be migrating the facility cost by set. Just something quick and simple. It doesn't take too long. Um, so let's go. We're going to create the package. And we're going to go to our builds and streams. We're going to come down to our fact build and do facility cost by set. This is a little off to the side. So this is the uh, components that are going to go into the package and I'm going to say okay. And I'm going to put it into the data manager to data stage conversion package up here in my temp folder. So I'm going to say save. And do I want to replace it? Yes. Okay, so there ends the first part. The next part, um, let me bring across here. Oops, that was supposed to be deleted. So if we take a look at my temp folder data manager to data stage file, you'll notice I have a batch file. This is the guy that I'm going to execute. Um, and really what it is, it's setting up the environment and making the calls across. Uh, it's a two-step process. The first one is cat migrate, which is going to take the package and create individual XML files uh, for uh, each object that's in, uh, in the package. And then the second part is to convert those intermediate files into a single file, single XML file that can then be imported into um, data stage. So that's step two over there. So um, hopefully you can read real quickly, but or it doesn't uh, make a huge difference. So okay. So here it is. Here I'm going to call data manager to data stage one. I'm going to convert my um, DM to DS conversion package. That's the one that we just created in this directory over here. It's going to put all of the output into the output directory and then it's going to create a DS input.xml file uh, that we're going to use then to import into data stage. So let me hit OK here. And you'll see we got through the first part here. It did the uh, processing fact build facility cost by set. If we jump across into our output directory, you'll see here's that XML file. Now if I had multiple builds inside of the package, um, each one of them would have been created as an individual XML file. So now the next step in here is I'm going to hit enter to continue. And now it's going to convert, it would have converted all the different individual XML files into a single dsimport.xml file. So we can see that over here. So that's what it's just created. And that, that really is the, um, the sum total of the export in and in a, uh, command line interface. The next step really now is I'm going to import this XML file. So I'm going to open up my data stage. You'll notice here under the fact builds, I don't have um, any jobs. So I'm going to import my data stage component. Let me just browse, make sure I pick up the right one. Come to output, dsimput.xml, and say open. OK, and I'm just going to go import selected and say OK. Right, so here it is, facility cost by set. So this is reading out of that XML file. <clears throat> right, and I'm going to say OK. 
All right. And here we go. Here's our fact builds. All right. And here it's imported facility cost by set. So now um, there are a couple of steps that I took beforehand. I'm going to come down to my utils. I created a, as part of the migration process, you have to create parameter sets that match the name of your data sources. So you'll see here we have target warehouse. Um, source, source database and target database are the same. They're both called target warehouse. So that's fine. Let me come back here. So inside of this parameter set, I have my connection string. So I'm using an ODBC connection called proddw. I'm connecting as SA. Since this is a demo environment, that's okay. But best practices, no, don't ever connect as SA. But be that as it may. And the password. So that's all great. So I'm going to cancel out of here. Um, the other thing that you want to do in general as good practice is uh, import the table definitions. Right, so here under ODBC, here's proddw. Um, again, I did this ahead of time. I, I've imported the table definitions for each of the, my source and target tables. So I'm going to apply that to these. Um, really, this is just a, a safety step uh, because what happens is during the export and import of the command line, it uses the data types that um, that data manager has applied, and there might be a slight difference. So just to be 100% sure, I'm going to come do facility cost by set and say OK. I uh, say OK, and I'm going to overwrite them. And you'll notice here that it actually picked up that the, these are Unicode tables, uh, Unicode fields. So that's fine. And let me just do the same here. So we come to my columns, load those. And in all honesty, this is kind of a unnecessary step since we don't have a transform object in between. It's using the same fields, but that's okay, just to be sure. Okay, so that's really it. So now what I'm going to do, um, let me take you through what we're looking at over here. Uh, you'll notice that the select statement that was part of the data stage, data manager build, has been brought across here. Right, so this it's not generating individual SQL. I can type in this case here. I've opted to type in my uh, my SQL statement. If I wanted to use uh, the lookups and do everything through uh, Data Manager without doing uh, through Data Stage, I'm sorry, um, I could have actually gone here and said generate SQL no, and given it my um, primary table, and then used lookups etc. to do all of those joins. But since uh, Data Manager I did it this way, it just brought it across as is. So I'm going to say OK. Um, now, this is my test database, so I have no data, but I'm just going to make sure that it can read and it can execute the query successfully. This should come back with my field definitions and no data in there, or it's just going to come back and say no data. Okay, so no rows available. Okay, that's fine. But the good news is <clears throat> it was able to connect to the database. So now I'm going to hit run. I'm going to say yes, I want it to compile. And compiled successfully. You'll notice here, <coughs> excuse me, um, with a parameter set called target warehouse, I've got my connection information. So if I wanted to change anything, I could, but that's fine. I'm going to leave it the way that it is. I'm going to hit run. And if all goes well, this should complete successfully. There we go. You'll notice we have a, a green line. That means it completed successfully. No rows were moved, um, but that's okay because I have no data in my target database, in my uh, source database, I should say. Okay. So uh, as you can see, there's uh, it, the conversion utility um, helps you along the way. Uh, full disclosure, it is not going to do everything. It does part of it. Um, there's some things that it does well, and there's some things that it doesn't do too well. Uh, but it's definitely something worth um, using in the right places, and it can it can fast track you in, in certain areas. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we'll just do a quick poke around here inside of data stage. Um, you know, any of the jobs that you create are created down here. Let's take a look at uh, all of the different stages that are available. So here's quality stage. Uh, you'll notice that there are a number of different stages that you can drag and drop all your different database connectors, so you can connect to any, any number of different sources. Um, developing debugging, so if you want to take a look at the data as it's running, you can insert those. Right? Uh, files, you know, reading from and writing to is uh, you know, obviously part of your ETL process. 
uh, processing, so aggregators, change data capture, comparisons, um, differences, expanding, etc. There's there's a ton of different uh, stages that allow you to um, that have the pre-built functionality available for you to use. Real time, so if you look, have data in in motion, you can in, uh, integrate with these over here, right? Um, and then restructuring data. So if you want to be able to um, move records around and combine data, etc., uh, you would use these. And then uh, any favorites that you use frequently, you can put into here, say you having to go through all of these objects and go and find what you're looking for, right? Um, you also have the ability to create sequencing jobs. All of that's available in here. Uh, and again, you know, um, we'll set up a webinar in, in the future on more details into actually data stage itself and how to maximize your use out of that. Um, so that's, that's data stage. <clears throat> Let me show you now real quick. Let me jump out of here. And we'll come across into the information service. So this is the, go the governance catalog. So this is the landing page. As, you, as maybe you recall on, on the one slide, we had the, uh, the services tier. That's really what we're look, uh, looking at over here. And these are, some, these are the web-based um, applications that we can use as part of data stage, oh, as part of inf the information service stack. So really what we have here is we have an administration console. So this allows you to see who's running, what's active, all those kind of good things. This probably has me logged out. So let me log in. Okay, so we've got here all you know all of your type of administration. You can see, you know, who's active on the group. You know, see who's doing what. You can set up some schedules and some monitoring and all that kind of good stuff. If we take a look uh, at metadata management, metadata asset management. So this is the tool here where you can import data into the governance catalog. Um, right. So you don't have to go and type in tables and fields and definitions and all that kind of stuff. This is the tool here where it has a number of bridges predefined that allow you to connect to multiple different types of metadata to import it into the catalog. Right. So I'm going to come to import. I'll show you one that I've already defined. And what I did here was I actually connected to my uh, target warehouse, so ProDW, and I brought in everything that looked like that had a count in the name. Just wanted to keep it uh, relatively simple. Um, you know it's a real demo when it takes a long time. Okay, so here's my import area. So if I open this, right, the import process really is a couple of, there's, there's three main steps. One, you're going to define your bridge, what it is you want to import. Then it's going to import it and put it into the staged area. So here you can actually take a look at what you're about to import. Make sure that you're happy with it, right? So you can see I've connected to one database. It's pulled in 546 columns. There's 12 tables, etc., etc., etc. And I can navigate through that list over here on the left-hand side, right? So here's all of my tables that I've brought in, okay? And once I'm happy with that, I then share it to the repository, and what that'll do is actually publish it into, um, into the governance catalog, right? And here it tells me what it's done. So that was really, this here is just an ODBC connector so for that bridge. Let me show you real quickly all the different types of connectors that we have. So um, I'm just gonna open up the IBM ones. Here's BI reporting, so this will connect directly into the, your BI environment and be able to pull that metadata out uh, and put it into the governance catalog. Uh, DB2, Data Architect, uh, Streams, Nateza, JDBC, uh, Cubes. Uh, so you can really go across the entire um, IM and BI stack and bring that information into your uh, governance catalog. Right? It's got connectors, <clears throat> you know, for Amazon, you know. Um, CA, that's it. You name it, it's, it's there. There's pretty much any form of metadata you can bring in, and then it's all wizard based, based right? You in, put in a few, um, fill in a few fields, hit next, 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 and you're done. <clears throat> okay. In the administration section here, this is where you can, um, if you've got, uh, if you want to do some cleanup, you can. Um, change what data you have in the system. Uh, oops, sorry, repository management, wrong place. 
uh, <clears throat> you know, so you can, if you've imported something in, and you imported the wrong set of data, this is where you can come clean it out. Um, you can manage duplicates here. Um, you know, basically all of your repository management take, takes place on this tab over here. Let's see. <clears throat> Maybe too many clicks. Okay, well, let's see. we'll come back to this one. If we come back to Information Sphere, uh, the, the launch pad, what we're going to do now is take a look at the governance catalog. Um, this is really, our, this is our read-only uh, view of the catalog, and this, well, not read-only, but this allows, this is where we do most of your, da your data governance, right? So we've imported our, our business, uh, we've imported all of the assets um, from all of the different sources, right? Whether it's physical tables, whether it's a logical model, a physical model, a BI environment, doesn't really matter. We've, we've brought all of those in, and now we want to start managing that metadata we want to start viewing things such as lineage, etc. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to start off over here. Um, let's take a look. This is the search, right? So we can go in, for example, and say um, um, account and say search, right? And let's see what it comes back with from the word account. Oh, nothing with the word. Let's take a look for. Um, um, let's take a look at our options. Let's take a look at our. So right now it's going on name, labels, types. So example. So you can. Um, let's go here. Let's go. Let's see if I'm a steward anywhere. No matches with that. Again, demo environment, not everything is set up. But we'll come back to this and we'll actually show you once we've set some of the uh, information assets up. So let's take a look. Let's go take a look at our implemented data resources. So this is where we imported our uh, metadata for ProdDW. You can see here we have all of the tables. Let's take a look at account. Right. And here it starts giving you information about the account. So we can go see the account table. So we can go see what um, what uh, columns it has, who the, who the data stewards are, etc. And let's we can edit this, right? So I can give this an account description. I can say this is the account dimension, and the long description would be the gen general ledger chart of accounts. Okay. Um, Stuart, you'll notice that I'm a Stuart. Let's <clears throat> we got a label. I've got a count. Okay, let's say save. Okay, and let's come back to our information assets. Okay, so this really allows us to, to view all of them. So we could actually come through here and go and say, Show me all of my database tables, and this will give me a list of all of my tables that I can jump to straight away. Um, personally, I find it easier to go through the hierarchies because it, it makes life easier. Um, business glossary perspective, here's where we can actually go and define um, business rules. Uh, if you remember from the one, uh, one slide that we had there, you, you define your business rules and then apply them within uh, the data stage uh, job. So here's where we go about doing it. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to do is you have to define your uh, policy. So we've got our sales policy over here. Under the policy, you're going to have um, all of your different governance rules. So right now, I've defined one called valid sales order. So let me come into this, right? And I'm going to edit this guy. And I'm going to say, for example, let me add me as, you'll notice here, there's Steve Leet. I'm going to add myself as the data steward. And I'm going to add a new rule over here. So you'll see what happens is you get a whole list of different types of assets that you can use, right? Whether it's uh, calling out to an application, an ETL process, um, you know, any number of different uh, rules that you might want to apply. I'm just going to do a data rule definition. 
because there's a bunch of predefined ones. So I'll go here. Let's say, um, let's go take a look and say alpha num field exists. Beautiful. So this is going to make sure that this field, the, uh, the data exists, and there's no non-printable characters. So any of those rules get violated. I can now take this rule, apply it inside of my ETL, inside of data stage, um, and know that my data is going to be accurate. Any errors in it, I'm going to be alert. My data steward is going to be uh, alerted. So let me say save there. Okay. You'll notice we also have these labels. So labels are uh, a great thing. It allows you to tag um, different components. So we've got account, we've got cost, right? Um, this here is we are browsing our list of labels. If we want to create some more, we can actually go into the administration and collect and define them. The queries, this is a great way. There's some predefined reports or predefined queries that allow you to um, view the data you know, quickly. So if we could, for example, say, show me all of my business labels. Right, and here's where they are, and here's what's using them. So we'll notice account um, asset, and it is labeled. It has the account label, I should say, is being used both on the account dimension and on the valid sales order. Right. Um, let's go see what other queries there are. Again, this is here we go, stewards. So let's go see who all of my different data stewards are and what data they're responsible for. So right now it's just me um, and I'm responsible for uh, the account D table and the valid sales order and part of the sales policy by definition since it's a roll up, right? So great way for you to actually get visibility and start setting up that data, uh, the data governance um, uh, process and making sure that what you have in your warehouse is in fact what you want it to be. So here's our catalog management. Here's where we describe about setting up workflows so you can set up approval processes um, so that it doesn't get, uh, you don't have uh, bad information being published into the catalog. You can set up who's allowed to do things within the system, define your labels. So we can define a new label over here, for example. And let's go say new. Okay. And we will say, we'll call this label um, demo label, right? This is, this is a test label. If I could spell correctly and say save. Okay. Okay, again, um, just trying to scratch the surface. There's so much more that I'd love to be able to show you. Um, but again, in the interest of time, I want to make sure that we can get through everything. So hopefully that demo really just gave you uh, a, a brief taste on, on the wealth of functionality that will be, that's available to you as soon as you decide to uh, take advantage of it. So how can we help you? Well. As Jesse mentioned at the start of the presentation, we are premier IBM business partners. We have both the technical knowledge and consulting skills to help you on this journey. We have extensive experience in architecting data warehouses and business intelligence platforms. We can help you define a roadmap uh, to success that migrates you from your existing data manager environment into the information service um, product suite. We'll work with you to define a strategy that adds the most amount of business value in the shortest period of time while minimizing rework and downtime. Uh, as you saw, IBM has released a conversion utility that will migrate some of the data manager code to data stage. Uh, this migration tool has some limitations. Uh, it's not going to convert your entire data manager catalog to, data, to a data stage project. Right? There's some things it does really well and there's some things that it doesn't do at all. We've been involved in the early adopter program and we can help you decide where that conversion utility is best suited and where um, moving the code manually is, is a better option. Uh, our team of seasoned consultants will work with you to help define a plan that will migrate those jobs that need to move, uh, enhance those that are potentially outdated uh, and need to be reworked, and then get rid of those or prune those that are no longer required. 
We have a deep amount of technical experience in data manager and in data stage. And really what that does is it allows us to understand what it is that the build is trying to accomplish and how best to implement this in data stage, right? There's, as you saw, data stage has many components to it. Uh, some things it can do that are similar. There's, you know, there's a couple of things that might work the same in a similar way. We know which are the right ones to use in what circumstance. Our consulting skills, uh, uh, on top of our technical skills, really make sure that the business continues to receive the value that it needs from this information, right? We're not, uh, we, we're not just brains on a stick. We really want to come in and help add value. And, you know, finally, adopting a new technology can be daunting. Uh, you know, it, it's not something to be t uh, undertaken lightly. And we at LPA believe in creating strong partnerships with our customers by enabling them ultimately to support themselves. We can either provide customized training or on the job transfer, knowledge transfer. Um, if you already have a data manager skill, a data stage skills, or you want to go out to a third party, that's fine too. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, when we leave, you are in, uh, empowered and uh, capable to maintain and enhance your IM environment, right? We don't want it to fall to pieces as soon as we leave. So uh, with that, I'd like to say thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, unfortunately, we ran a couple of minutes over, so there's not going to be time to respond to the uh, questions that are coming in. But what we will do is leave the chat window open for the next couple, for the next 10 minutes or so, and uh, we'll collate all of the uh, questions and respond to um, all of them by email. So once again, thank you so much for joining us, and please feel free to continue uh, your questions. Thanks. Bye-bye.